Hey guys, it's Lydia here from LE3D, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I built my dog a little kind of dog house. So, let's get started. Alright guys, first of all, I just want to say welcome back to the channel, but if you are new here, thank you so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate you coming in and watching this video. Um, I do enjoy putting out videos for people, and um, I really hope you enjoy them. If you have any suggestions on videos, please let me know down below in the comments. Um, I love to look at the comments and actually answer you guys back as soon as possible. Um, but other than that, thank you so much. Uh, so starting off, I just wanted to say that this project was just something fun to do for me. Um, it doesn't really have to do anything with the channel. Um, but I do, I have my little dog who's always in here with me um, during making videos and actually doing project. And he just sits on the floor, so I decided that um, I would make him a little dog kind of house thing. Um, and it actually turned out pretty nice, and I can't wait to show you guys how I did it. Um, so basically what you'll be seeing in the video is, first of all, Fusion 360. I'm going to be designing the brackets for the actual house, and then... I have to get some wood and cut that up and measure and everything so um, it was a lot of fun just experimenting with actually printing something and then putting it into the real world um, that has to actually fit something specifically. There was some ups and downs but um, I hope you guys enjoy the video so I'll see you guys at the end and uh, yeah. Alright so I'm just going to talk a little bit about the design process. Now I kind of winged this really. Um, I just started with one corner bracket or angle bracket and then eventually um, actually used or designed the wood so that I could figure out where the angles needed to be, um, how they needed to be, and um, uh, how many sides it needed. So like uh, the frame would have two and then there would be an extending part to connect two parts together. Um, but it was super simple. I just basically winged it. Um, and just went along until I finally had a full-on base. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to let you guys watch me design and extrude and stuff. This was actually super easy. I used Fusion 360, which you guys know I love to use. It made it ten times easier um, and got the job done. So I'll let you guys watch this, and then we'll be back when everything um, is going to be printed.
All right, so this is the first batch of all of the pieces. Um, basically, what we have here are the uh, feet for the actual uh, model that we're going to be building, and then some extra caps. And then these are the T braces that are on the top. And then all the angled pieces are actually being printed in some Sane Smart um, silky looking pink. Um, that is actually the filament that I printed my Albert Einstein in. Um, and the reason why I'm printing it in two different colors is because I didn't really have enough of this orange uh, poly smooth to print with. Um, but I will be taking advantage of what I can do with these. Um, and that is just, uh, I'm going to be putting these into the smoother, into the polisher, and getting them all very nice, and then making them extra strong to hold up the actual um, structure that we're going to be making. But other than that, um, these printed very nice. All of these printed s simply, and then these ones actually had support all the way down here, and then there was some support in here also. Uh, but very easy. I think the only hard parts are going to be cleaning out the supports on the angled brackets. Uh, but other than that, let's put these into the polisher and then uh, we'll get everything else ready. Alright, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick tip. So if you have a polisher and your prints are really sticky and you don't want to leave them on your um, this stand because you have other things to polish uh, and the bottom's really sticky, one thing I like to do is just get some kind of shiny surface. This is just some transfer uh, stuff that I have for my vinyl but you want to put some just baby powder onto it onto the surface and then just cover the bottom of the print with it you can also just sit it on this surface so that everything is smooth and then that means it'll harden with a smooth surface and so nothing will stick it won't stick to the table or anything it just is nice smooth and once it dries completely and hardens all the way you can just wipe it all the way off and then it's super smooth. All right, so I actually found uh, some scrap pieces that were left in our shop that were used for making frames. And so I just cut them to about a foot. Uh, and then you'll see I actually cut them down a little shorter because I thought they were too long. But I did end up using those pieces for the, the cross beam on top, as you can see. So I basically just wing the length here. There's no special cuts. It didn't look perfect. And yes, I know I didn't use um, safety glasses in the beginning of cutting, but I eventually did get some. Um, but it was super easy. I just cut some random ones. They did fit snugly into the feet. Um, but as you can see, I had to use a hammer. Um, and I actually did crack the T-bars. And I actually eventually will use a heat gun to soften up the plastic to prevent cracking but uh, I did get a lot of crappy cracking um, with the rest of the angle brackets uh, but it eventually turned out a lot better um, and then I just had to cut the rest of the wood to connect the long the two longer pieces the, or the two sides that will actually put it all together um, but I just dry fit everything after I would use a heat gun just to make sure everything would fit and I didn't have to print any new pieces um, and I actually did have to print one new piece because I broke it while cleaning up the support. But other than that, everything went super simple and really very easy. So after dry fitting everything um, and putting actually these uh, sub the middle beams in after cutting them all, I decided to use some wood glue to stick them together. Uh, Simon over at RC Life On, he used wood glue to um, connect pieces of 3D printed parts together, so I just thought I'm using wood glue for the wood, but it will also hopefully stick to the actual plastic. So after um, everything was glued together, I just let it dry, and then we'll put the whole, the both of the parts back together. All right, so putting it back together, um, I had to heat up these parts once again with the heat gun, and it was actually a lot harder than I expected. I had to use a rubber mallet to hammer it in, and I did get some cracking, which I'll show you guys here, um, down here in the right corner. Um, there's definitely some splitting and cracking with the actual brackets. I probably could have fixed that by making the gaps bigger, um, but I'm going to be draping a uh, piece of fabric over this. You won't see many ways, and it doesn't need to be super hefty duty, but as you can see here, um, they definitely split a lot. Uh, and I could have done a better print quality also, but it's totally fine and it won't matter.
buddy. Lay down in there. Lay down. In here. Come here. all right guys so as you can see there my dog actually did enjoy it um it turned out very nice and um, i was going to actually put a sheet or something over the actual structure but then i just decided that i had an extra blanket laying around that my dog could use um and it just keeps it extra warm in there i did put one of his little old beds in it um, and he actually does enjoy it, especially when there's a bone to go along with it. Um, so, again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. Again, I will be down below in the comments answering all your questions and suggestions. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.